Does it help you develop your reading skills? Does it help you learn vocab? And does it need to be part of your Korean textbook collection? 안녕하세요, you. 안녕하세요, hey you. It's Natalia, and if you're new here, I have been studying Korean for a few years now. I have used so many different Korean textbooks, and today I would like to share my thoughts on Tuttle's Korean stories for language learners. Yes. So Tuttle sent me this book as a gift back at the end of 2019. So it's been about like a good year and a half that I have been using this book and I'm ready to share my full thoughts on whether I think it will help you in your Korean studies as a beginner or not. So let's go ahead and get started with the review, shall we? Go, go. So as the cover states, this is a collection of traditional Korean folk tales. There are a total of 42 entries in this book, but actually only 40 of them are Korean folk tales. If you're wondering what that means or what the first two entries are, they're kind of like self-introductions. Like the first entry is two students like introducing themselves to each other. So if you're not interested in that or if you've already studied Korean for a while, you can probably just like skip that and start on entry number three as that is the first Korean folk tale. Yes. So each folk tale has the Korean storyline, then the translation in English, and then it has pre-reading questions, a vocabulary list, comprehension questions, a writing activity, and when it's applicable to the folk tale, there's also a culture note. I also want to mention that at the end of the book, there's quite a few like Hangul exercises. So if you haven't started learning Hangul yet, or if you're not super confident in like your ability to read Hangul, you can go ahead and complete those exercises. So since I started this book at the intermediate level, I didn't do those because <laughs> I didn't need them, but it's rather extensive. They even teach you a few words and phrases and they teach you how like the Hangul syllables are written. So if you're like extremely, extremely new to Korean, you can just skip to the back, learn how to read Hangul and then start on entry number one. Tuttle also included an audio CD, so if you are a beginner and you want to follow along with the recordings of each folktale, you can do that to like help you uh, develop your listening skills. Yeah, <laughs> develop your listening skills, which will also help you develop your pronunciation. Just want to throw that in there. But if you're not a beginner and you're an intermediate learner like me, you can just listen to the folktales before you start the reading to like test your listening skills. Um, I like doing that. But anyway, I just wanted to mention there's a CD in here too. Now, if you read the preface of this book, you'd know that the author is actually a Korean language professor and she wrote this book so that she could use it in the classroom. However, since I believe the vast majority of you guys are actually like self-studying Korean, I'm gonna review it from the point of view of someone who would be self-studying Korean as a beginner. And as an intermediate learner, who was using this book, there were a few things that stuck out to me that I'd like to share. The first of which is the romanization's like a little odd. So there are actually several different systems for romanizing Korean. So perhaps Tuttle is using one that I'm just not familiar with. Um, I'm not too sure because they didn't actually say which system they're using. But yeah, the romanization was a little, I guess, different from all the other textbooks that I've used. I mean, I don't encourage you guys to use the romanization. Uh, longer than a few weeks as you're just getting used to reading Hangul or the Korean letters But since I know some of you are gonna be a little dependent on it at first It was something I did want to mention if you can read some Hangul already Maybe not fluently or very quickly or anything But if you can read it a little bit, you'll be able to figure out the romanization pretty easily um, Another thing I wanted to notice is that I like some of the romanization like when the word is romanized I found a few times where there was a typo where the romanization didn't match the last time it was put into romanization in a different like unit or in a different for a different folktale, I guess. So again, I assume that's a typo. And while I wasn't looking at the romanization for the whole book, only in the beginning, I did notice it happen at least one or two times. And speaking of vocabulary lists, um, they're, a little, they're a little interesting. And what I mean by that is you will see an absolute beginner word defined next to an intermediate or advanced word. And I understand that these are like folk tales. So obviously there's gonna be a few vocabulary words that are needed that just don't match the beginner level or there aren't like beginner level versions of that word. So it makes sense, but I saw the same word being defined several times throughout the book. So for example, in the first folk tale, you might see the word kada, meaning to go defined. And then you'd also see it in story number five, in story number 12, and story number 31. Like it was like 
constantly defined or present in the vocab list so maybe if the professor that wrote this book was wanting to use it like just kind of skip around the book in her classes that makes sense but as a self-studier who's probably going to work from beginning to end it didn't really now speaking of the comprehension questions, it's very clear that they are not meant to be answered in Korean and the reason I say that is because the level of Korean you would need to actually like answer these questions in Korean is probably more of like an intermediate level. And the writing activities in this book, they're also very clearly not meant to be written in Korean. Like sometimes they don't even really like correlate to the story. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, what was a time that someone broke your trust? Because like the theme of the folktale was about like people breaking each other's trust and stuff. So yeah, I think they were kind of just meant for like participation activities in the classroom. Overall though, I really do like this book. I liked the way the stories were written. Like it's very, <sighs> at the level of a beginner, if that makes sense. Like, yes, while there are more advanced words and while yes, there are more intermediate grammar structures that are used from time to time, the way like the like the sentences are written is very right for a beginner reading level, if that makes sense. Like they start off very short, very choppy. And while that might not sound appealing as a beginner, you kind of need those short sentences as you like develop your Korean skills. You want longer sentences, which is what ends up happening when you get towards the end of the book. Like the stories are rather long. Like you'll go from reading one paragraph and then two paragraphs and then three paragraphs to a page. And then you're reading two or three or four pages worth of one folk tale. So I like how it kind of progresses in a way that is good for beginners. And I do really think that stories are interesting. I mean, okay, I'm a little biased because I took a Korean literature class when I was studying abroad in Korea. So I kind of like already knew I was gonna enjoy the folk tales, but I just wanted to mention, I do like, I do think they're really fun. And I do think they're worth reading. And I do think they are going to help you better understand like the Korean culture and certain aspects of like Korean life. Like some of the things that I saw like in Korea make a little bit more sense given like the background of these folk tales, especially given the cultural notes that they put in here. Like it was just, it was really nice to be rereading some of the stuff that I studied while in Korea and just have like these cultural notes. So after hearing about everything that I thought was good about this book, something that was like a little odd, I would say that if you're trying to practice like everyday Korean, it's probably not your best bet. There are other books that are better meant to help you like navigate life in Korea and stuff than this one. This one, it is like folk tales, which means the context is not the context that you would be speaking Korean in. But if you're looking for something that will supplement your studies, something that will help you learn more about the Korean culture, perhaps make you more motivated, more connected to Korea, then I think this is a good pick. Those are my thoughts. Um, if you've already used this book, please share your thoughts in the comment section. And if you guys have any beginner books that you would like me to recommend, please uh, recommend request some in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. But uh, I will see you guys in the next video. If you'd like to see more beginner recommendations or thoughts, you can check out this playlist down here. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Tell me you guys. Bye.